Once upon a time, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer roamed the streets as a wood-paneled V8-powered luxury family hauler. Jeep then retired the name for an extended period of time until this year, when the 2022 Grand Wagoneer showed up. And although the wood paneling is only on the inside of the car now, unfortunately, the recipe is still largely the same. The 2022 Grand Wagoneer scores a 7.6 out of 10 on our star rating scale, and we're about to tell you why. Now, if you're curious about any specific part of the vehicle, just use the chapters function down below to help navigate. And before we move on, please subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also find us on social media using the handle at Motor One Car. There's certainly a lot to take in with the Grand Wagoneer's design, and we mean that literally. This is among the biggest three-row SUVs on the market, and it's sizable no matter how you look at it. The more time I spend looking at this car, the less I like it. And that's kind of weird because normally the opposite effect tends to happen. I think I narrowed it down though. It's this. It's the chrome trim that goes all the way around the windows. It just takes away from everything else. And then the two-tone paint. It, it just seems like an afterthought. You have this much of the car, all the way from the top to the bottom done in red, and then just this little trim piece is done in black. I mean, it is optional. You can get everything one color, but the majority of them come out looking like this. There is a trim level called Obsidian, and that blacks out all the chrome and honestly makes it all look a lot better. It's not all bad though. The head-on angle is surprisingly powerful and the seven slot grille is featured loud and proud. There are plenty of great wheel designs to pick from, including these gigantic 22 inch rollers and the lighting signatures and the head and tail lights look classy, but the real magic is inside. This has to be one of the most striking interiors in recent memory. Just look at all of this. And here's all the wood paneling that I promised you. And in the Grand Wagoneer, it's all the real stuff too. There is an option to have this replaced with a sort of metallic finish, but I don't know why you would do that. I'm way into this rolling cigar lounge look. My favorite part is right here. Grand Wagoneer spread all across the passenger side. In a car like this, you'd expect the seats to be comfortable, and luckily the Grand Wagoneer delivers. The leather, it feels super soft and high quality, and there are a million different ways you can adjust it with uh, lumbar and bolstering, et cetera, et cetera. There's also heating, ventilation, and at least for the front two seats, a massage function, which you can all control down here. Let's talk space for a second because there is tons of it and in all three rows. The middle section has a captain's chair layout with the no cost bench option and sliding the seat back and forth is really easy allowing everybody to get into the third row with ease. With all the seats up, the Grand Wagoneer has 27.4 cubic feet of space, which is more than the Cadillac and enough to accommodate a decent sized grocery run. Fold down that last bench with the button and you're working with a road trip appropriate 70.9 cubic inches of cargo space. We have to be getting close to peak interior screen, right? I mean, the Grand Wagoneer offers seven of them in total, over six feet of total screenage. That's a lot. The main one you're using is the Uconnect display, and it's fantastic. It's very easy to learn. It's very intuitively laid out. I love it. And it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which are wireless. The one right below, I could do without. It controls all the things with the seats and including the, uh, the back seat air conditioning, but it's been pretty glitchy, I gotta say. It does come with a little magic trick though. Push that button and there's this hidden cubby which has a wireless charging pad for your phone. And as you can tell, we have been using all of the different USB chargers to charge our camera batteries throughout the day. I love that it has USB-A and USB-C ports, which is really clever thinking. The interactive passenger display is the weirdest one in the entire car. If you look, you can't see it at all from the driver's side, but if you're seated here, it's visible. You can control the media in the entire car, and because this one is equipped with the rear seat entertainment package, you get Amazon Fire TV. So that means you can stream Netflix while you're driving as the passenger, and it works for the rear seat screens as well. That's gotta be the best family feature of any car I've ever driven, unless, you're counting this refrigerator in the center console so you can keep your snacks and your drinks nice and cold. Who doesn't love snacks?
If you don't drive an SUV of this size often, piloting the Grand Wagoneer will take some getting used to. It's about as wide as most city street lanes, but because it's so tall, you can see just about everything around you, and the blind spots are pretty manageable. Powering this behemoth is a 6.4 liter Hemi V8 making 471 horsepower and 455 pound feet. There's nothing shy about how this big engine makes power, working seamlessly with the eight-speed gearbox. The issue is weight. This Series 3 model weighs about 6,500 pounds, which is a lot to move around, and acceleration suffers because of it. But now we get to the Grand Wagoneer's fatal flaw, which is ride quality. This Jeep costs more than $100,000, and that's Range Rover money. That car, despite whatever you want to say about its build quality, rides much better than the Grand Wagoneer. There's no issues here with road noise or anything like that, but a full-size luxury SUV needs to float over the pavement, and this just doesn't. And there's one more piece of bad news. The Grand Wagoneer has worse fuel economy than its closest competitors. This monster is rated at 13 city, 18 highway, and 15 combined. But after a week or so of driving, we've seen about 14 combined, which is rough. That said, the tow rating is fantastic at just shy of 10,000 pounds. The 2022 Grand Wagoneer starts at about $88,000, and the one we've been testing is the fully loaded Series 3 model, which is over 100 grand. It has a few options on top of that that we like, which includes the rear seat entertainment package, which gives you the Amazon Fire TV, and the tow package, which allows you to hit that high tow rating. That means all in, we're looking at about 110 grand for this, which brings us right back to the competition. The Grand Wagoneer does a lot well, but there's too much that's still wrong with it for us to recommend it over its closest competitors like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator. For more on everything we review, head over to MotorOne.com. And as always, thanks for watching.